Hello. We had some scheduling difficulties and none of our local geeks were able to make it in person to this area meeting. Please excuse our lack of a live person. The good news is, because we can edit this video before sending it out to you, you'll get the highlights and the shortened version and we'll have to listen to me yammer on for a little less than some of the other areas that have to digest it all in live. My name is Jacqueline Calder. I'm an ICT consultant. And just a quick update here from the IT and technology area. We just recently, as many of you probably know, just recently finished meeting with the Family of School IT contact or faucet person from every school. And it was a great set of meetings. And we got a few messages loud and clear repeatedly. One of them was that a little more support was needed around using the teaching notebooks. The teaching notebooks, as many know, are different than the laptops that we're used to being as our student computers. They're much smaller and hence a little less powerful, but much more portable. And because of the portability, there's also encryption, which is coming on every laptop on them, and a couple barriers that have uh, been crossed throughout the teaching notebook rollout. To start talking about the teaching notebooks, just to go through a few different places online where people can access support. The first one is Scudsby Network Learning. So that's this site here and it is scudsbynetworklearning.ca. This site is a collaborative space where different people post, a lot of posts there for myself, um, different people there post different IT resources, opportunities, collaboration opportunities. It's a blog and we're sharing resources on it. There's also a whole page here about technology tools and different tools. And you'll notice that each page has a place for leaving comments and discussion. So anybody who creates an account, you don't have to create an account, but if you want to leave questions or ask questions, then you can, or post comments, then you can create an account and ask questions and post different topics on the site. And it allows anybody who uses a site to respond back. So your chances of getting a response at a fairly decent time frame is, is much higher because there's more people collaborating together on it. There's also a page here on the Essential Classroom Practices. And this page here has some general resources. And then a list of the essential practices. And if you go onto one of the pages of, say, descriptive feedback, you'll see some resources. And then you'll see tools that could be used to support this essential practice. And there are some links to some different tools that may be used for that practice. These pages are still in development, and we're adding resources all the time. And if you have something that you would like to add, please do send it on. The other, pay, or the other place online that could be accessed to support teaching notebooks use is the staff web. So if you go to the staff web, and if you go to teaching, and IT resources, and IT tools, and you'll see there's a page on teaching notebooks. And on this page there are all sorts of support pages, support forums, um, how-to videos, how-to PDFs, documents, links, all sorts of important tools and supports there that can help teachers in using the devices. The other big part that comes into play is the school climate or the school culture around the teaching notebooks and what has been said from many different principals from the first few schools and families of schools that had the rollout was that integrating them into different school practices really supported all the teachers in using the device and becoming more comfortable with the device and integrating it into their practice. So here are some ideas. There's a really good document here that you can open up. It's a Word document and in this case this document was created when John Dance asked all the principals of the schools who were in the first phase of the teaching notebook rollout um, what worked for them on, in using the device in their school and there's some wonderful wonderful examples in there and here are some highlights here um, some schools 
integrated the teaching notebook into every staff meeting and they found that that really helped. So they had different people who were talking at the staff meeting integrated in in a different way. Sometimes teachers completed a form online or they accessed resources or they shared things that they had done in their classroom. Uh, it's become an expectation in some of these schools that that device just comes with them to the staff meeting. Another example is integrating teaching notebooks into PLCs. Some examples of PLCs we've seen are ones that use video recording right on the notebook. They use the webcam or take pictures of student work or student discussion for moderation in the PLCs or using sometimes using an online tool to support accountable talk. Basically, the PL, some PLCs are taking one of the essential practices and choosing a tool that will support them in integrating that essential practice. Some schools, teachers are offering kind of informal lunch and learns or collaboration where they work through problems together or share ideas. In Collingwood, the parent council um, organized a What the Tech night and this was the entire family of schools, parents, staff, and students and it was a, a night where they had stations all around the gym about different technologies and parents and students and staff could bring in their devices and go around from station to station and, and try things out and test things out. Some schools, and I think these ones have been mostly secondary schools, have done a Minds on Media or similar sessions where they have stations that are led by teachers and those stations are having teachers actually try the different things that those teachers are their model and then ha and then encourage the other teachers to join in and, and try creating things using different online tools or different IT tools um, and these minds on media sessions can be fine-tuned for each school based on their SIPSA. Some schools commented that just a simple act of changing all their messages going out to staff electronically versus paper gave many people no option but to get comfortable with the device. Some schools have chosen one online or a web tool and have used that tool school-wide um, as a starting point for navigating into the Web 2.0 world. So they would integrate that same tool into multiple PLCs, different projects and curriculum throughout the year and it was it kind of allowed the teachers to work together as they ran into problems. They knew there was someone just around the corner who was, had also used the tool. Some examples of that are class blogs or voice thread accounts, um, both online tools that are fairly reasonable to integrate into the classroom. So here are some other resources to help teachers using their teaching notebook. The first comment here is help desk, help desk, help desk. It's really important if teachers are running into technological difficulties, things aren't working, they're ha finding spots in the school where computers are regularly dropping a network, the wireless network, or if a particular computer is continuously dropping a wireless network or having access issues to certain things, it's really important to put in a help desk ticket um, a couple of things have arisen this year where the help desk and the IT department had no idea something was an issue because there were no help desk tickets submitted about it. So even if, it, if it's one of those things you, you kind of know no one's going to come out and fix right away for you, it's really worthwhile to put in a help desk ticket because it allows the IT department to know where to focus their resources and supports. Here is a, another page um, on teaching notebooks, frequently asked questions about the rollout. Um, here is a comment about web browsers on the teaching notebooks as the, the laptops as well in a school there are two web browsers one is Internet Explorer the one that looks like the blue E that we all know the thing with the blue E or Internet Explorer is that we're using an older version of Internet Explorer because of, a, of compatibility issues so sometimes websites act funny or look a little funny and if you ever notice this or if a teacher ever notices this if you go to start programs you'll see a program called Mozilla or Mozilla Firefox and the Firefox browser is just like Internet Explorer there's a place up at the top where you add in the address and there's a a place where you can search Google and it works very much like Internet Explorer except it's a most recent version because it doesn't have the same compatibility issues and you'll notice that some websites and some um, some online activities work a lot better on Firefox. So it's worth giving it a try if you're seeing some odd things happen using Internet Explorer. 
Here's another really good support document. It's a Smart Notebook file, and Smart Notebook is on all the teaching notebooks and laptops. It's the software that you use with smart boards, but you don't need to have a smart board to use the Smart Notebook software, and it's great software for using in the classroom. And this, so this file was created by Troy Komish, and there are all sorts of great ideas in there uh, for troubleshooting and for those struggling at the very beginning getting used to the teaching notebook. Again, this file doesn't, surprisingly enough, doesn't open up properly in Internet Explorer, but if you open up this page in Firefox and click on that link, it will work. Here is a document created by the IT department on how to get teaching notebook support. So it asks different questions and sends you in the right direction about different types of problems. And here is an interesting and a new initiative or a new tool from IT. This is called CASE. And this page here will take us to a set of instructions. Now this case software that is now being used by the board is it allows us to download software onto our teaching notebooks. So as long as the teaching notebook, because they're not deep frozen, we can install software as we like onto it. And the one thing that you notice when you get a teaching notebook is that there isn't very much software on it. They're not as powerful and have as much storage and memory as a regular laptop. They are smaller and so a minimal amount of software is put on them so that it doesn't overload the machines. And then the next question is, well, how do we get software onto them? Well, if you're on a school network, so this won't work from home, but it will work on a school um, network, and you go to this website right here, sysmanagement.scudsby.on.ca, you get a sign-in sheet that, or page that looks like this, and you enter in the login, or your, logger, your login and your password, your username and your password, is the same username and password you would use to log in to one of your school computers. So it wouldn't be your admin username and password if you happen to have one. It would be the one that you would use to log into a student computer. You leave the organization field blank and click login. And then you get taken to a screen that looks like this one here. And it's a list of all sorts of different software titles. Now right now, not all the software is there. There's just a few of them there so that we can see how the program works and the IT department is continuously adding new software on here so keep checking back often if you're looking for a particular title and eventually all the titles that are ministry licensed for use on all the different computers in our school board will be available here and we can put them onto our teaching notebooks so you click on the title that you're interested in and you get a page that looks like this and it has an install now pay, uh, button and if you click the install now button it will download the software to your teaching notebook. The trick is, is that it doesn't show you any sort of progress bar. It doesn't go 1%, 2%, 3% and show you how much is downloading. It just looks like nothing is happening. So what has happened a few times is that teachers just keep clicking install, 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 and all of a sudden they have eight versions of the software downloaded onto their teaching notebook, which kind of goes against the whole idea of, of having it with minimal software on it. Or the other thing they do is go back and try all the different titles. So it's important just to let it sit for, you know, 10, 15 minutes, let it download and install the software, and the next time they restate, restart their computer, they'll notice that the software is on there. So this is a great way for us to get software that is licensed ministry-wide onto these computers without having to use the disks that are in our library because the teaching notebooks don't have disk drives. So that is the CASE software. And here is a Word document that lists all the different types of software on the teaching notebooks. So it shows the differences between the Phase 1 teaching notebook and the Phase 2 teaching notebook. And then it gives you some links to some online software that is ministry licensed as well. And there are some documents here about just certain tri tricks and uh, tips on using the teaching notebook, how to set your home page, how to change your power settings so the computer doesn't go to sleep on you every five minutes, how to add a printer, how to use the encryption, and how to use Dropbox. So if you have any questions or concerns, then by all means, help desk ticket if it's a technical issue. If you're looking for support on integrating technology into PLCs and action research around the essential practices, then please give either myself or Jim Carlton a shout and we will do what we can to support you and your schools.
in the journey of integrating technology.